everyone and welcome! We've already had a look at the majority of regions in Valoran, but the one we have only talked about indirectly is Noxus. And although Swain is supposed to get his story updated with his rework, there already are some characters whose story got pushed forward. So let's have a look at the Noxian brothers Darius and Draven. There is no greater symbol of Noxian might than Darius, the nation's most feared and battle-hardened warrior. Orphaned at a young age, Darius had to fight to keep himself and his younger brother alive. By the time he joined the military, he had already developed the strength and discipline of a veteran soldier. The first true test to Darius's resolve occurred in a crucial battle against the Masia, where the Noxian forces were exhausted and outnumbered. Darius's captain called for his troops to retreat, but Darius refused to accept such an act of cowardice. Breaking formation, Darius strode towards the captain and decapitated him with one sweep of his gigantic axe. Both terrified and inspired, the soldiers followed Darius into battle and fought with incredible strength. After a long and grueling battle, they ultimately emerged victorious. Seizing momentum from this victory, Darius led his now fiercely loyal troops in a devastating campaign against the Masia. After proving his power on the battlefield, Darius turned his gaze homeward. He saw Noxus riddled with weakness, where greedy, complacent nobles drained the nation's strength. Seeking to restore his country to greatness, Darius took it upon himself to reshape the Noxian leadership. He identified weak figureheads and violently removed them from their positions of power. Many in Noxus saw Darius' skull as an attempt to seize power, but he had a different plan for the throne. He had been watching the rise of Jericho Swain with keen interest. In Swain, Darius saw a leader with the mind and determination to bring Noxus to glory. Unlike his brother Darius, victory in battle was never enough for Draven. He craved recognition, acclaim and glory. He first sought greatness in the Noxian military, but his flair for the dramatic went severely underappreciated, thirsting for a method to share Draven with the world. He turned his attention to the prison system. There he carved out the celebrity he desired by turning the tedious affair of executions into a premier spectacle. At Draven's first execution, he shocked onlookers when he ordered the doomed prisoner to run for his life. Just before the man managed to flee from sight, Draven brought him down with a flawless throw of his axe. Soon all Draven's executions became a gauntlet through which Noxian prisoners raced for a final chance at life. He used this trial as his own personal stage, and turned executions into a leading form of entertainment. He rallied onlookers into a frenzy, while desperate prisoners scrambled to evade him. They never succeeded. Rejecting the solemn black uniforms of Noxian executioners, Draven donned bright outfits and developed flashy signature moves to distinguish himself. Crowds flocked to see Draven in action, and tales of his performance spread quickly. As his popularity grew, so did his already inflated ego. He belonged at the center of attention. Before long, the scope of his ambition outgrew the population of Noxus. He decided that the glorious exploits of Draven should be put on display for the entire world. These were the general bios to introduce Darius and Draven. Now let's have a look at a comic called Blood of Noxus that expands and explains certain parts of Noxian history. They say that just before you die, your life flashes before your eyes. They're wrong. I didn't see what I'd done. I saw all I had yet to achieve. And I saw how short a time I had left to accomplish anything worthwhile. That's when we decided we were going to conquer the world. Should I have seen this coming? Been 10 years since I came home. 5 since I saw Kuweleda in the flesh. She was Noxian to the bone. So she knows full well the price of rebellion. She swore we'd never be parted, but that was before Noxus came to Basilish. This introduction portrays Darius the way he truly is, a warrior ever loyal to the might of his nation. We see him marching onto Basilish. It is then followed by a flashback from Darius' childhood, 22 years ago. We see Darius, Draven and Quileda watching the gates from afar. Noxian soldiers march through, but the elders of the city don't fight them. For Noxus gives you two options. Resist and be destroyed, 
or swear loyalty to Noxus and become part of something bigger. As usual, Draven doesn't see them as a threat, but Darius knows these men have never known defeat. By the time Darius could even finish his thought, Draven was already within range to strike down their general. Of course, being young and naive, Draven failed. The general easily parried the throne blade, while his soldiers brought all three of them in front of him. Quileda tried to protect her friends and told the general that Draven was just a boy who didn't know any better, which Draven refused to accept. He told the general that he had killed men before. The general asked him a simple question. You say you have killed, but for what do you fight? For fun mostly, and for respect, and because I can, Draven answered. The general, who revealed himself as Captain Cyrus, told Draven that he is wasting his talents on petty desires. Instead, he could fight for the greater glory of Noxus. I have to interrupt the story for a second here. In case you didn't watch the Progress Day story, I recommend doing it now since you will ruin the story for yourself. Go and watch it before you get spoiled. Alright, the story then brings us to present days. Here we see Draven, Darius and his war mason, Tamara. In case you didn't immediately recognize Tamara, she is the main character from the Progress Day story. This reveals that she was feeding scouting information directly to Darius. That's why I wanted you to watch the story first. It spoils the major plot twist. So, Darius, Draven and Tamara were getting ready to break inside the rebelling city. After going through their options for the last time, Darius decided to let Draven choose his warriors and storm the breach opened by their heavy weaponry. They knew a lot of soldiers would fall on both sides, but this was simply an option that would show results. The scene cuts right after Draven got caught in an enemy explosion. It cuts to a scene from 9 years ago. Darius and Quileda witness the aftermath of a war won with chemical weapons. Apparently a general known as Amistan caused this. She must have had a Zonite alchemist in her service. Quill told Darius that she is aware of the horrors Noxus is using in wars, but using chemical weapons is far worse than anything she had seen. After that, Cyrus arrived. It seems like he knew about this and he was glad to see the Zonite weapons proved effective on the battlefield. Darius reported that the road to Neverai is clear. Since Neverai is in Ionia, it confirms that this place was a testing ground during the invasion of Ionia. Quill called Cyrus out and told him that this wasn't an honorable victory, to which Cyrus replied. The enemy are dead, are they not? Quill continued by pointing out that no army was destroyed that day, only farmers, elders and children. The scene cuts back to present days. It was right after the battle. Darius was visiting Draven to see how his wounds were doing after the explosion got him. Darius realized that this wasn't a coincidence. Quill knew Draven would rush the breach, so she prepared the explosions. Darius had to act. After that, he visited a place he held dear in his memories. Black Rock Mare. This used to be our place. I loved her then. I think maybe I still do. But I won't let that stop me. A series of memories from 9 years ago rushed into his head. It was him together with Quill. They were enjoying their final moments together before their legion split. It was their final memory together before they marched to the opposite ends of the Empire. This memory faded as an assassin appeared from behind a tree, only to be killed a second later by Draven's ex. After that, Darius and Draven marched on the city's gates. With the head of their assassin, they forced the leader of the rebellion to walk out. That's when Quill appeared. Disappointed that Darius is still alive, she had to ask him, why did he go there? To remember, to see if he could understand why she was doing this, he answered. And yet, he did not understand. Quill introduced her second in command, Invadia. Originally that position was occupied by Quill's son. But Quill revealed that Darius' call to arms killed him. He died fighting for Noxus in Freljord. The savages sent his head back to his general. Then Darius questioned her motives. He asked her if she was doing this because her son died. He told her that Noxus is built on war, on blood and sacrifice of its sons and daughters. Quill had two options. She would bend the knee again, 
or die. These were the only options. They couldn't simply walk away, because if Noxus let one city go, others would follow. But even so, hope appeared on the horizon. A battle fleet approached the city from the ocean. Quill was sure it was Stuart Emmanes from the city of Vindor coming to help her. But Darius assured her that he was coming to retake the city. He gave her the options one last time. Bend the knee by taking the Noxian flag to the highest tower, or be destroyed. Quill didn't believe him. She was sure that the fleet was on their side and that the siege would break upon their walls. The scene cuts to nine years ago once again. It shows Quill's fleet escaping from Ionia. Unfortunately, Quill's right arm was afflicted by the alchemist's poison. And the only way she could survive was if they cut off the afflicted arm. Quill wanted to die. She was sure she couldn't handle the pain. But Darius couldn't allow it. She still served Noxus. The scene cuts back to the present day at the gates of Basilish. Quill had enough. She told Darius she had her eyes open. She saw what the service to Noxus really meant. It meant giving your blood and life. It meant feeding it your children. Decius was more than just her son. She sat locking her eyes with Darius. He was... That's when a quick slice from her second in command ended her life. Understandably, at first Darius didn't take it lightly. But Invadia assured him that Quill forgot the three principles of strength. Might, Gil and Vision. She learned that from Darius himself. And that was the story of Darius and Draven. There should be more story relatively soon, since Wayne will get his update as well. Honestly, there are so many easter eggs in this story that it could be a separate video on its own. But we will save that for another time. So if you enjoyed this, feel free to rate the video and subscribe for more lore. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Discord if you'd like to chat. The links to merch and our second channel will be in the description. And with that, thank you all so much for watching and for your support, you know I really appreciate it. And as always, thank you come again.